Okay, folks, welcome. Welcome to today's little, uh, well, back in Dundee again, cycling. Uh, we're going to head to the Churros wagon to try this new Churros and chocolate dip. But anyway, this is the VA. I don't know if it's open again today. Every time I come now, it seems to be shut. So we might go and try and see if we can, uh, see if we can get in. Right, I've parked the bike up. It looks really quiet. So somebody did go in. But uh, yeah, it's unusually quiet around here today. Very strange. Right, let's see if we can get in. I'm actually not sure what this is uh, meant to be. how quiet this is folks I've never been in here for, well, for a while but there was always malt when you came in here look how quiet it is there's a novelty worn off has nobody got any money now to spend even though it's free let's go and see what's up here So that was a V&A, folks. So um, thanks to everybody who came and said hello. Um, there was two Spiz fans there came up to say hello, chatted away, Margaret and Leona, I think the names were. So thanks for stopping to say hello. And um, a big hello to, now do you know what? See my memory, folks, if I get distracted. Of course, those two ladies came up and spoke to me after the guy spoke to me. Um, the chap that works in the v and I think his name was, was it Sean? Oh, honestly, dark hair, glasses. I'm so sorry, mate. I know you told me your name, but I got distracted. Anyway, thanks for coming to say hello. I appreciate you saying hello, and uh, I'm glad you watched uh, the video. So yeah, the VNA was open this time, and um, yeah, it's quite quiet, as you see in the video, but it's nice because uh, you got to see around, and uh, lots of the little nooks and crannies, and uh, it's always nice to sit outside there as well. Um, so yeah, so hello to everybody. Let's stop to say hello. Now, this is a new poster here I'm just looking at. Advertising coming soon, a new experience for Broughty Ferry, so let's go and have a look. I think it's just another cycle path. Makes it look very exotic. Yeah, look, it's just, uh, that's meant to be Broughty Ferry Beach, I think. Looks like Miami. Yeah, look, just a new cycle path. Coming soon. This looks quite interesting here. Look, what is this? Check out that man's eyes. This must be a world where, uh, people's eyes are bulging out. So I think there's some new artwork under the bridge here, folks. We're gonna have a look at it, then we'll head across to the Churros van, and hopefully it'll be open today. Well, uh, pictures are still here. Yeah, so I've started to draw these uh, lines. I'm not too sure what they're for. It's something to do with the uh, art. Let's go and ride around them and see what it, uh, what it's meant to be.
So that was the wee Churro Hut, I think it was called. Really nice, um, nice homemade, fresh churros. You got five for three pound, or you got eight for four pounds. So just went for the five, because they were quite big. And then a wee um, tub of your chosen dip, so chocolate, obviously. Um, but the only thing is, folks, it was so windy trying to eat them. Um, that all the sugar and the chocolate was blowing everywhere, all over my face and my glasses and my hands, so it's a total mess, which was a shame because they were really nice. So, um, yeah, really nice but a disappointing eating experience because of the wind, which has nothing to do with the, the wee Churio hut, Churro's hut. So, yeah, lovely, really, really nice. Shouldn't have really had them. Very fattening, but I need to go and work it off now on my bike, do some power cycling. Oh, well, we're just going to get some coleslaw. <laughs> so we've moved up, well actually it's another day now, it's another day we've moved from Dundee up to the St. Cyrus area. Now kind of limited at the minute to where we can go for walks and cycles and things because of the weather's just been awful. Like today again you just don't know where to go because it's showers, it's going to be showers all day. So I looked on the map for the driest place locally and it's kind of St. Cyrus and Trolls. It's going to be 30% chance of rain, but everywhere else is like 80 to 100% chance of rain. My plan was to go to St Andrews and walk down to the uh, Rock and Spindle, but it's just going to rain there all day. So, fingers crossed that this is going to stay dry today. It's just to get out and stretch my legs. I've not had a good walk for a while, so i um, going to go for a walk down here. And uh, let's just hope the weather holds up. So across the viaduct we go once again. There's actually people fishing down there today. I'll just, uh, I'll just show you. There you go. There's a man trying to catch something today. Trout or salmon? No, I don't know. There's an actual fish farm place over there though. So that's where we're heading right down the far end. Now this bridge is um, actually a one-way system and it's always a nightmare because some cars start coming this way, some cars start coming that way and they meet in the middle. I know it can be a bit of a hit or a miss but allegedly cars coming this way have got the right away. It's when you get big lorries like that. That's the problem half the time. Because you can't get past them on these ancient bridges that were built back in the no 1600s, 1700s? Don't know. 1800s? But here's another big lorry trying to come across. And another big one sitting there waiting to go. So this is when you have to stop and try and guess if there's any cars coming. Yeah, but these big lorries aren't built for these old bridges. Look at that. Right, through we go. Through the viaduct. Now, everything looks very green today, as you can see. So I think it's going to be very overgrown. And uh, let's just hope we don't get stung today with the nettles. This is the walk that goes uh, with numerous contrasts. You go through woods, rivers, dunes, wildlife, and then we hit the beach. Look at this, it's like a jungle again in here. Right, just trying to help two ladies there who are trying to get from Montrose. They're from down in England, but they're trying to get from Montrose. They thought they could walk all the way along here to St. Cyrus, but obviously with the water um, you can't. So I've had to divert them up basically just where I've come from, up through the kind of woods and over the viaduct and back down the other side. So it's a long walk for them, but they don't mind, as I said. So uh, yeah, so here we are at the end of uh, the Kinnabar part of the walk. Once again, got this part all to myself. I'm going to walk right down to the edge. Sand is really, really soft. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut back along the beach and up um, into Kinnabar Woods because coming through in the car, um, all the devastation over the last couple of years, they've actually now chopped down most of the trees and it's just, well, the wood's gone basically. It's gone from being a big, thick, big wood to nothing, stumps. So we'll go and see if we can go back that way and uh, have a wee look. But yeah, one of my favorite places down here. I was gonna bring my chair and just sit here today, but obviously with the weather, it's just a bit cold. Right, we'll go down the edge. Um, you can see the sand is really soft, so it's quite a hard walk. But it's beautiful, folks. It's beautiful. So 
Um, so we're going to walk right down to the end here, which is the uh, point where the tides all kind of cross. It's the dark skies are gathering, folks. Now, will it be the usual? I'll get to my far furthest away point, and the rain will come on. Nearly there. That's St. Cyrus in front of us. Right, I'm at the furthest away point, folks. Nearly at St. Cyrus Beach. So this is the end of Montrose Kinabar Beach. It goes all the way along. I don't know if you can see the lighthouse way in the distance. I'll be heading there later as well for more dolphin watch, like last week. It is nice here, though. It's lovely. Right, it's any wildlife experts. What kind of bird is that? Is that a dodo? <laughs> it's not a seagull, so I'm not actually sure what. It's just maybe just a normal gull or something. So this is where your tides all cross over. Covering up umpteen different directions. It's always quite uh, unusual to watch. There you go. Crisscross tides. Oh, it's gone folks, the bird's gone. Is that a ghillie mop maybe? Hmm, don't know. Right, the sun is trying to peek through the uh, clouds there. Look at the skies, folks. Look at the skies. So the sun came out for five minutes there, so just had a quick five minutes in the sun, which was nice. So we're now going to cut back onto the uh, path which takes us into the woods. Let's see, we'll try and get around to the Kinaba bit if we can. Um, just to show you the, the, the tree clearance that's gone on here. It looks like there's a little grave or something up here. Let's go and, uh, let's go and investigate. So there's a little area here that's been cleared. And it looks like there's some flowers and twigs. So is this for a pet maybe? Or was it just a zen little garden? There's nothing to say. Probably the remains of another war bunker. So let's walk down this path here. Again, this is an old um, part of the old airfield. Just what's left of the remains of World War II. The main airfield's way over that end, but this is just kind of, you find bits lying everywhere. Right, so we've got Montrose that way, two and a quarter miles, and the North Esk the other way, half a mile. So, can I cut through there? Or I think what I'll do is cut along here and go round and come back out. Hangs a wee sign here. What does it say? It says Kinabar Farm, wooden area closed due to unstable trees. Do not enter. So here we have some derelict World War II buildings. I mean, they're for years, well, obviously, since World War II, but they've been uh, fenced off like that for as long as I can remember. Can't get in there. And you can see there, folks, that's the remains of uh, the wood. Right, there were signs up saying you're not allowed to walk on those paths at the moment, folks. So uh, I've had to kind of cut back and hopefully cut up through these woods here, um, hmm, seems a bit strange. Just past some people there, are they going up that way? Okay, so looks like we're not going to get to see the, uh, the woods, unfortunately. Uh, I just need to film them when I go past in the car. Right, we walked in quite a good plan. I've kind of ended it back up when I've kind of started, just at the kind of crossroads bit here. So I need to go back through the woods, back to the car, but uh, I know where I am now, I got lost for a minute there. Couldn't kind of quite get uh, my bearings as to where I was. So yes, yeah, back through the long grass, back up over the viaduct, back to the car. Right, no footway, bike, bike lane, and frogs. Back at Ferry Den for the second part of our walk today, heading down to the lighthouse. We were here last week. This is where the dolphins were spotted, but uh, I didn't get down as far as the lighthouse because it was raining last week. 
but the sea is so blue today. The sun's out at the minute, maybe that's why. A long way to continue. <laughs> and uh, it's about a 20 minute walk down to the uh, lighthouse here. But you've got lovely little bays here, look at this. from that, uh, that plane. So that's what it was about, what, two hours ago, way over there somewhere. Hey, can you see the bench, folks? It's right at that white building, that white hut beside the uh, lighthouse. That's where we're heading for today. There we go, folks. I did like scene. A little beach, nice clear water, and a lovely lighthouse. Right, so I've arrived here at the bench of the day. A lovely little bay underneath the lighthouse, the sun's still out, so I'm just going to sit here and chill for the next uh, 10 minutes and just enjoy this uh, fine scene. So we've got this moonscape, uh, moonscape landscape, moon Landscape, landscape, moon landscape, moon landscape behind me here, folks. This is uh, just behind the Fenniden Lighthouse, Skirty Nest Lighthouse. And this uh, goes all the way into Oosen and then to Borden. I actually go via Borden on the way home again just to see what's going on. But yeah, it's lovely down here. It's a whole walk all the way along the coast via fields of bulls and cows and sheep and things. So, uh, yeah, I'll do the whole walk one of these days. There's a lighthouse behind me, Skirty, Skirty Nest. Goodness. So we've got some natural rock chairs up here. Like, just obviously where the water's been coming in. Just gonna sit down here and enjoy the view. This is my view now. I've got my own little kind of, own little bay going on here. Very nice. So enjoy my second part of the walk there down to Fairly Den Lighthouse. I just continued around the bay there to ooze in a bit. It's always very enjoyable. Lots to see and this weather. It's now turned out sunny. So the forecast this morning is saying showers, uh, but not, we've not got any showers here. The sun always shines on the East Coast. There's a boat coming in. There's actually no big boats in the harbour just now at all. So maybe that's the more starting to come in. There's one coming in right now. That's just a small one though. Right, folks, where did that one come from? I've never seen that one before. Weird. I bumped into folks, look. All right, folks. It's BKR. Nice to meet you all. Check out his channel. Tune in. <laughs> right, one final stop here, folks, at Luna Bay. My East Coast tour today. Angus kind of tour. Right, we'll go and climb the dune, but not up there. We'll go down the side and up bit easier, my older legs. Right, we climbed to June, folks. Look at this scene. Out of breath. Still in night though, it's about five o'clock. Tides in, beach is empty. I think you just sit here, folks, it's so sheltered. Um, you stand up, it's windy. Just sit down, of course, all the dunes around you. It's uh, really nice and hot, so I'm gonna sit here for the, what, 20 minutes? It's wonderful. <laughs> 